Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for coming back. So if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for coming back. And if you're a new subscriber or a new person on this channel, welcome. And I hope you subscribe and I hope you enjoy the video and content on this channel. So first of all, I just want to say thank you for all the feedback I've received on the OSPAP series that I have been doing for the past two weeks. Um, I'm really glad to see that these videos are being helpful for people who are planning to come to the UK to be UK registered pharmacists via the OSPA program. Um, I really, really am so glad about that. And I just hope that everything works out in your favor. So today I'm gonna to talk about student visas. And it's one of the topics that I felt that I wouldn't do, but I just feel like because it's really pertinent to you coming to the UK, I thought maybe I'll just cover a few things on the student visa. Now, let me just put it out there. I am not an expert on visa stuff. Um, and the last time I had a student visa was back in 2010. So what I have done is just gone back on the gov.uk website, which I strongly recommend that you go on just so you can familiarize yourself with the kind of visas um, that are used in the UK, especially with a student visa and plans to change to another type of visa. I'll put all the links as usual in the description box, just so you can check it out. And I'll also link other videos that I have done in the series and the playlist. So you can also check it out and refresh your memory on the previous videos and just to follow the journey as well. So I went on the gov.uk website just to refresh my knowledge of what has changed and truly quite a few things have changed. I mean it's been almost 10 years so of course a few things changed. So for you to come from a non-EEA country into the UK as a student you would require a student visa and it's called a tier four student visa and there's so many kinds of visas um, that are needed in the UK there's a tier one I believe there is a tier four which is student there's a tier five there's tier two there's so many of them and it's usually it's more like a points based system where you need to get specific points and you'll be eligible and you will get the visa provided every other condition has been met so you haven't breached immigration rules you haven't overstayed at any point and you have a good immigration history and so many other things that might not be included in the points based okay so for the tier four there are 40 points and you get 30 points for having a cas a cas is called a confirmation of acceptance of studies and i'll go through that and then the 10 points is for having the appropriate funds and maintenance um, to come to the uk and of course i'll go into that so let's start with cas so cas as i said is the confirmation of acceptance of studies and it's usually issued by your school so the university would issue that to you when you have an unconditional offer and usually when you have paid a certain deposit for your fees and that kind of gives the school assurance that you are indeed coming to study with them and you know just meeting all the other requirements that they might have some schools might want to see your english certificates obviously they're all listed so i'd encourage you go on the school's website and look at their requirements for you to get an unconditional offer or even an offer and all that so if it's a conditional offer that you have it's probably because they're waiting for some documents maybe references or something or english um test. i don't know it could just be anything really that they're waiting for but an unconditional offer means you've met all the requirements the school requires for you to be able to attend um, their course in the university. And they'll usually will tell you what these things are. So once you have it and you've paid a certain deposit, I don't know how much that deposit is, it varies from school to school, then they'll issue you uh, a CAS. So now the CAS is not really a physical document, it's more like a digital record and it's unique to you. So your CAS is yours and it's valid for about six months, which means that once you have your CAS, you need to be able to, you need to apply for your visa within that six months. Usually like if you, once you get your CAS and you've put things in place, just apply as soon as you can. And that's why I've always said, apply early, plan early, just so everything works out quicker and you won't have to waste so much time. So once you have your CAS and obviously your unconditional offer and you've paid a certain deposit, that's 30 points for you. Now, the 10 points, which is the fund and maintenance, and that's the part that, even though it's 10 points, you need to explore a bit further. The next thing would be getting the 10 points and that is for funds and maintenance. Even though it's 10 points, it requires a lot of, um, What's the word now? You just need to pay a lot of attention to it because it can make or break 
your visa being successful or not. Now, this 10 points is funds and maintenance, and it's made up of a figure that the um, UK border agencies or gov that UK have come up with, which would be how much they think that you need to be maintained in the UK every month. And it varies from place to place. Funds you, or maintenance funds is made up of the balance of your fees and how much it would take to maintain you in the UK every month, okay? And this figure is different, as I said earlier, depending on where you are in the UK. And for schools that are situated in London or Greater London, and I'll put a link to, you know, the different, like the link to where the UK government classify as Greater London. I'll put a link there so you can see the places there. So if you remember in my previous video on choosing OSPA providers, there are five universities. Um, off the top of my head, I do know definitely that University of um, Aston University of Birmingham and University of Sunderland are not anywhere in the Greater London region. I believe Brighton and Hertfordshire might not be, but don't quote me on that. I do know for sure that Kingston is in the London, Greater London um, area. So if your school is in the Greater London area or in the London area per month, you need to have £1,265 in your account and you have, need to have that figure for nine months. So a maximum of nine months. So that figure times nine. So one thousand two hundred and sixty five times nine is what you need to have um, in your account. That's about eleven thousand three hundred and eighty five pounds that you need to have in your account. OK, for a maximum of nine months plus your school fees. If your school is outside of London, you need one thousand and sixty five pounds per month up to a maximum of nine months in your account plus your school fees. That's £9,585. So that's a you know, reasonable difference in there as you would be able to see almost £2,000 difference. So that's what you need to have in your account plus your school fees. And you need to have that for a minimum, for 28 days, not a minimum 28 days. I would go for like 30 or even two months, you know, have that in your account for a good number of months, maybe two months, but really they've only asked for a month but just to cover all grounds okay now with that figure plus however much your balance of your fees is remaining I would say just put a little bit more extra on top of that figure and the reason I say this is because the UK bother agencies they use um, a converter like a currency converter called Awanda and as you know with currencies it changes every day so therefore if you put the exact figure and the um, exchange rate goes up then your balance will be less so put in a little bit extra I personally if it's not too much between 500 pounds to 1000 pounds extra just to cover all grounds you don't have to you can put you know however much figure you want to put in but just make sure it's not the exact number only because whenever you would have calculated it might be different from the day you apply and everything, if that makes any sense. And also the same with 28 days, put it for a little bit more than 28 days, just in case. Now, when you're printing your statement, it needs to be, um, there are very, there are details of what you need to, um, what kind of bank statements are acceptable. So again, I'll put the link to the guidance so you can read it and, you know, refresh your memory or your knowledge on um, what you need. So as far as I know, the bank statement has to be obviously from the bank. It has to be on, I think, on a letterhead or stamped by the bank with a specific date. It has to include your opening balance and it has to include your um, the balance on the close of the day. And usually I would print it like a day before um, I'm applying or if you wanted to do that, a day before you apply, just so all grounds are covered. Because one of the reasons why student visas sometimes are refused is because maybe the balance was lower it wasn't up to 28 days or the by the time they converted the amount it was less so those are things you really want to avoid and that's the reason why sometimes visas are refused okay so once you do that the fees for a student visa is 348 pounds and usually they would give you a decision within three weeks okay and you can come to the uk um it's best to apply three months before your course um is going to start. So for example, let's say you got your CAS six months in advance, and then when it's time to apply, you need to apply within three months of your course start date. And when your visa comes out, you can come to the UK a month before your course starts, okay? Now, I hope that makes sense. So 
CAS is usually valid for six months. You must apply within that six months. You can only apply within three months of your course start date for your visa. And when you do get your visa, you can come to the UK within um, a month of your course start date. They will answer you within three weeks and that's when they'll give you a decision on your visa, which is great. It's not very long. Um, but if you want a decision faster, let's say you wanted it within five days or five working days, then you can pay for something called a priority visa. And I think it's an extra £500 on top of the £348 that you're paying for the visa and student visa fees. Now, if you want super priority, which is, I think, one or two working days, I can't remember, I think it's one working day after you give your biometrics, then you pay £800 extra. And this is why I've said do everything on time. You will not need to pay any extra priority or super priority fees because you will have so much time to wait for the three weeks for them to come back with a decision on your visa. So apply early, do everything early, just so even if there are any um, hiccups along the way, you'll be able to rectify it still within good time, okay? Now, you can bring your family um, if you're coming on a student visa. And by family, I mean dependents, and that would mean husband or wife or you can bring an unmarried partner with an unmarried partner i feel like you need to show more evidence that you guys are unmarried so that will bring other documents and to be honest i don't know what they are but it would be in the guidance and i'll link that in the description box you can bring children under 18 um, now when you're bringing family you will pay the visa fee for each person so if you're bringing your wife that's an extra 348 pounds if you're bringing two children that's 348 times two you put that in also you have to have maintenance for them as well so it's a lot of money if you're going to bring them apart from the student visa fees you're also going to pay for something called the um health surcharge and i never paid this um when i was a student um back then but i think it's between if I'm not wrong, between 300 to 450 pounds, it depends. And I think there's a tool, again, I'll link that in the description box that will, you put your details and it will tell you an estimate of how much you'll be expected to pay. But I think it's between 300 pounds to 450 pounds. I'm not sure how it's calculated. Okay. And again, if you're bringing your family, you have to pay for each person. So it's kind of cheaper to just come on your own and then maybe get your family later if it works out that way okay in terms of the documents you need for a student visa obviously you would need to apply and you have to apply online so there's an online form it would guide you through it's very intuitive and it's straightforward and at the end it would usually would show you um a list of documents that um, you're required to um provide um you also need a tb test there a list of countries where you need to provide that you have a TB test done and the results. Um, I think, again, I think there's a link which I'll put in the description boxes. It will tell you what countries would need to provide that. If you're from Nigeria, you will need to provide a TB test. And I think so many other countries, but again, I'll link that in the description box. I will link the guidance. Now this guidance is really, really, really important. You need to read it because it changes often. And there's so, it goes into details. Like once you read the guidance, honestly, you don't even need an agent or anyone to do your visa for you. You can do everything by yourself because all the information you need is in that guidance, okay? Now, when you pay um, for your visa and everything, I think you also have to pay for biometrics, but when you're applying, I think you can select um, a post office, which is where you need to go and collect your BRP, so your biometric residence permit, when you arrive in the UK. So when I did mine, it was just, you know, the sticker that you put in your passport, and that was the end. We didn't have um, the card. But now, what I'm understanding is that you would select a post office that they would send your BRP to. And when you apply for the visa, they would give you a 30 days visa and it's an entry clearance, which allows you to come into UK and within 10 days, you need to go to that post office and pick up your biometric residence permit, which is the card. And then your school has to have a copy of that. Okay, so I think that's the process. So, I mean, by the time you're applying for your visa, you obviously know what school you're going to and you'll be able to apply to maybe a post office that's close to your school or close to where you would leave. Now, let's talk about accommodation. You know, when I talked about the maintenance fees um, that you need to have, that's 1,265 and 1,065 for outside London. Now, if you've paid accommodation to a school, so if you want to stay on campus, 
They can deduct however much you've paid for your accommodation from it, but it has to be up to a maximum of £1,265. So for example, let's say you're staying on campus and you've paid £3,000 for your accommodation and that's full accommodation, they would only still deduct £1,265 from the total maintenance that you have to pay. Okay, and if you've paid less, and let's say you paid only five hundred pounds for your accommodation, they will deduct five hundred pounds. Do you get it? But they will not deduct more than one two six five. So you need to still show a significant amount of money in your account for you to get your visa. Said start early. It really makes a massive difference. Go on the gov.uk website. It would have all the information you need, the guidance. I will link all the links at there. Also, and this is really important. Um, if you call your school's international office you would find that, that they would answer you they would give you so much advice regarding um the visa so they were very 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 helpful all the investors i know um for the aspa providers they're very good at doing that so don't you know be scared to ask them always ask they have an international office and they will tell you you know and they'll be able to guide you through it okay i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to do another video um i think it will be more of a q and a so if you have any further questions do put them in the description box and I would answer them. Some people have already sent me messages via DMs and Instagram. So I'm going to put those questions together and I will do a Q&A in case maybe there's videos, some of them are not addressing some of the questions you might have. So I'll put them on and then we'll talk about them. So if you have better questions, leave them in the comment section of the videos or you can DM me on Instagram and that would be it. Thank you so very much for watching and I'm going to do my next video will be on pre-registration and what to look out for, how to apply, how to get a placement and what the experience was for me as well. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.